Hey guys, today we're building a retro gaming PC from the year 2000. When I test video cards, I usually use a very fast CPU, and when I test CPUs, I usually use a very fast graphics card. So these builds are more period correct and a better representation of what it was like gaming on one of these machines back in 2000. Every computer build needs a bit of a story or a theme to make it more interesting. So we are back in Germany. It is November of 2000 and you could walk into an Aldi store and pick up one of these computers. Now times have changed. Aldi is now in 18 countries with 10,000 stores. So maybe this story resonates with you. But even if you haven't bought anything from Aldi, if you ever bought a computer that came ready in a box, I call them supermarket PCs, then hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Now, just in case you're wondering and the question keeps coming up, I'm not from Germany, but I have lived in Munich and Frankfurt for a while. Anyway, this PC cost 1,328 euros back in the day. That's around 1,500 US dollars, so quite a substantial amount. In this video, we will start the journey by going over the parts that used to come with this machine. And I will build a system with closely matched specifications. I will also share my thoughts on where these supermarket PCs usually skimp out and have weaknesses. The PC came with Windows Millennium Edition, so that's what we're going to use. And I will then run it through some benchmarks and play a few games showcasing what it was like to game on this Aldi PC in the year 2000. So let's start with the motherboard. It has Aldi 2001 written on it. However, it's an OEM version of the Asus CUVX-M motherboard. It's got a VIA Apollo Pro 133A chipset, is compatible with HEP 4X, has three PCI slots and takes SDRAM. Now, I didn't have this exact motherboard, so we're going with a substitute from Gigabyte, which has a slightly newer revision of the same chipset, which is the VIA Apollo Pro 133T. When Aldi chooses these parts, cost is usually a very important factor. They could have gone with a motherboard with the Intel 815 chipset, but that would have cost more money, so they went with VIA, and it's not a bad choice. Back in those days, VIA was a really good alternative. The processor is a Pentium 3 running at 900 MHz. However, if we look closer, it's got a front side bus of only 100 MHz. Now, Aldi could have gone with the 866 MHz version, which has a higher 133 MHz front side bus, and that processor would have been faster. However, larger numbers sell, and 900 MHz sounds more impressive on paper than 866. The Aldi PC came with 128 MB of SDRAM PC133, so that's what we're going to use for our build. And for the graphics, we've got a GeForce 2 MX, a very popular choice back in the day, really good value, and I have done a video review recently. Uh, check out the links down below in the description if you want to watch that. The card is compatible with HEP 4X. However, in my case, the NVIDIA driver forces HEP to 2X when it sees the Apollo Pro chipset. This is because the chipset can be unstable when using HEP 4X. I've experienced this with an ATI Radeon card, which enables HEP 4X mode, but then locks up the machine on a pretty regular basis. However, it's not a big loss. There's almost no performance difference between HEP 2X and 4X with this graphics card. For sound, the Aldi motherboard actually had an integrated Sound Blaster CT5880. Now, this is a purely software-based sound chip, so to speak. It does affect performance in games, but the name Sound Blaster carried a lot of weight, so it was important to have that name on the datasheet. Our motherboard also has an integrated sound chip. This one is from Realtek, so we're just going to go with this. The hard drive was very generous, 40 gigabytes of storage. That was a huge amount back in those days. 5,400 RPM, a very average drive, you could say. I don't have the same model, but I've got the 10 gigabyte version of that exact same model, and I have reviewed it on the channel recently. So that's what we're gonna go with. 10 gig is enough to install Windows and a few games. The Aldi PC had two optical drives, a DVD-ROM and a CD burner. For our project, we're just gonna go with a standard DVD-ROM drive. A few words about the software installation. I've installed Windows Millennium Edition. Next up were the latest VIA 4-in-1 chipset drivers, as well as the latest VIA IDE drivers. I use the NVIDIA Forceware driver 23.11. This one is from end of 2001, so it's one year newer than the machine, just to make sure that all the games work uh, just fine. I ran the Coolbits registry tweak in order to toggle VSync off 
We're using the Realtek Audio Driver 3.92 for the onboard sound card and I've also upgraded DirectX to version 8.2. Let's have a look at some benchmarks in 3D Mark. 5,905 for 99 Max and 4,695 for 2000. In Direct 3D games at 1024 by 768, we're getting 90.6 in incoming, 35.8 in Dracon, and 54.1 in Expendable. Under OpenGL, we're seeing 76.3 for GL Quake, 105.3 for Quake 2, and MDK clocks in with 50 FPS. I also have a result for Quake 2 in software render mode at 640 x 480, 31.1 FPS. And here we got the power draw results. This machine is surprisingly very energy efficient. Only 35 watts on the desktop and the maximum power draw I saw during 3D Mark 2000 was 59 watts. Obviously, if you bought one of these computers back in the day, you would do a bit of office work and internet research, but you would likely also play games. So next up, we have some game footage of Star Lancer, Mech Warrior 4, Colin McRae Rally 2, Alien vs Predator 2, Deus Ex, and No One Lives Forever. Come on, you heard the boss. SF everywhere, JC. Your orders are to shoot on sight. A UNATCO informant on the North Dock can get you inside the statue. Look for a bum. Identify yourself with the phrase, iron and copper. I'll take what I can get. The transmitter shot, but it looks like your camera feed is working. We'll be monitoring you from the APC. You're heading toward the main personnel quarters. So now we should have a good idea of what gaming was like back in the day. Games that were released before the year 2000, they should run really well on this machine and you have options to turn on anti-aliasing, texture filtering and max out the graphics settings. Games that came out in the year 2000, most of them should run well but you might have to load the details a little bit and play with high or medium rather than very high. Games that came out the next year, they can already be too demanding for this machine and you might have to lower details to medium or even less. Now installing Windows, games and just using the machine, a few weaknesses cropped up. The first one is the hard drive. On paper the transfer rates are pretty good, but it just feels quite sluggish. The 128 megabytes of RAM was sufficient for all the older games, but anything more modern and you could quickly see that the machine struggled. It would basically swap the memory out to the hard drive and that would slow down the machine and just quitting the game at the end would take a long time for the machine to actually become responsive and for you to actually do something again. The sound card being entirely software based can also cost you a lot of precious CPU cycles. And there you have it, that's how gaming was on the Aldi supermarket PC in the year 2000. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this video because I'm planning on doing a follow-up video where I'm gonna address some of those key weaknesses and we're gonna upgrade some components and then have a comparison from the original RDPC to the one that we improved with some upgrades. And that's it for this video. Let me know down below in the comments what do you think of these build videos. I can definitely do more of these. I would also love to hear any experiences of buying a supermarket PC. Maybe you even bought an LDPC, but maybe you bought another brand from another chain. What was the machine like? Did it have any weaknesses? Were there any difficulties with upgrading? And yeah, what is your take on buying a pre-assembled PC rather than going out and buying the parts and building it yourself? Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another video.